Okay, so today I'm going to show you um, my burger recipe and how I make it and um, and how it, how it tastes really pretty really good. Actually, it tastes, it tastes pretty moist um, um, and it melts in your mouth and on your hand. So, you got to get um, your hamburger first. And you can use whatever hamburger you want. Um, one of the things about it is it's better quality ingredients you use. Um, it only makes it better. I mean, it's great. And I'm just using the you know the package five pound tubes you find at the store. That's all I'm going to be using. And so I'll explain that to you. I never like opening these packages at all. It's always a pain in the butt. So, um, what I like to do is do that open. And then I'm going to put on vinyl gloves. Um, after I don't wash my hands and all that, but I put the vinyl gloves on um, as an extra protection. But also, uh, I've done a bare hand before and it tends the fat of the, with the way I make it, the fat of the um, hamburger sticks to your uh, hands so you don't want to um, uh, it, takes, it takes a little bit to get it off so you don't really want to do that at all that's for sure I mean you can I'm just warning you could take a little bit to get up to get up the cream. so I just like my hand on the, the glove. Okay. I use a rhino gloves um, and they're old. Uh, I, I use them for part of it. And it also helps for, um, you can take them off and it helps with not spreading any contamination. So this is a five pound. Um, obviously, you know, you can adjust the recipe depending on how much you make. And so I, Open the package up here. Woo. Oh, there's the there's there's the piggy saying hello. All right. So you want to get your hamburger? I'll let you like it's about half a package. It's about two and a half pounds. Now it's not exact, but. You know, if you can figure it, you took about 50% out, or about two pounds. Probably at least two pounds, right? Or a little bit more. Um, and it's not necessarily ingredients, it's more so um, what I, uh, the method that I use to put the burger together that makes it how it is. Now, see, now these are all contaminated, so I'm going to take it and put my, put my, um, hamburger away. Back on its own shelf on the bottom, so always remember to keep your meats and stuff like that on the bottom. You don't want anything that can leak, um, any sort of, uh, um, raw blood or anything on your food. So that's that part. Now, um, I like to take, and this is this is lettuce from our garden. Okay, I'll show you why in a minute. I have lettuce, I have oregano, I have rosemary, and I have a couple leaves of sage in here. Um, and you may be wondering why the lettuce is here. Um, it doesn't have to be lettuce. I'll just tell you that right off the bat. It doesn't have to be lettuce. Um, it, it can be spinach. It can be, um, and I do this to help get the stems out. And I don't care if it releases the oil because I want the oil in the hamburger because this is all going to get mixed into the hamburger. So, and I'll take these stems out and the guinea pigs will eat these stems. They will enjoy them. They enjoy herbs, period. 
um, most of them anyway. And I've got a cute little video planned for you. Um, once we're getting ready to plant, I'll clear out some garden and plant some fall space. I'll show you how we have the guinea pigs clean the garden up for us. Because again, if you have, if you don't watch my other videos, they're, they're, uh, when they poop, it's, it's basically can go right on the, right on the ground. There's no waiting, there's no hot period, it is just cold period. Um, I believe that's because of how their digestion works. They eat and eat and eat all day, but they're not that big of an animal. So they're constantly just eating the fiber and getting what little, um, nutrition they can from the, Food does it get? Um, it's probably like I said, I tell you all the stems. You might get a stem in there too, but you know. However, you want to take your herbs and and basically you want to make sure they're, you know, pretty fine particles and that kind of stuff. So that's you know, one part of it. Um, I don't have any. I use those herbs, and you can use dry herbs, but it's always better to use fresh herbs, um, not only for taste, but because of the texture of the burger and how it fits together. It's always a little better, but the slug's got our chives, so I have to use these dry chives. Like I said, you're, you you can figure out what seasoning you want to use, all that kind of stuff. I've got too many clothes, so now i got to watch that type thing. So I'm going to take these off so we don't contaminate everything else in the world. All right. So, a little of that, and one of the other recipes is you can, in, in place of um, lettuce, you can use parsley. Um, like I said, any kind of green that can stand up to a little heat for a little while, basically as long as it takes to cook a hamburger, that's what you're going for. And like I said, you can see this there, I'm going to put just, just a touch of this cayenne pepper in it. You don't need much, just a just a touch. And that's the thing about seasoning. If you're starting to develop however you like to taste and all that kind of stuff with your seasoning, well, it's better to season too little than too much because if you season too much, you might not even like it anymore, but it could have been a good herb for you. So this is a little um, Memphis barbecue. And now, besides the lettuce, there's other unorthodox things I do. Because I'm weird like that, and I like to experiment. And sometimes, um, sometimes the experiments uh, come out well. Sometimes they don't. So I use sweet baby rays. No, they don't pay me. I just enjoy their sauces. It's not as good as making our own, but we haven't done that. So I take I take some shredded cheese. It's in a bag. You like a taco mix or whatever. Okay, so once you once you have your cheese added, um, you're gonna um, add one more thing. So the cheese is actually gonna be in the burger, and so is the barbecue. Sauce. Now I'm cheesing this whatever flavor, whatever barbecue sauce, or you can experiment as well. But this is going to go in the um, uh, in the bowl, and this is a, all. All I do is this is how I pinch it. I take it, and turn it over, and I squeeze just one squeeze. So does that? That's all I do. So however much that is, if it's a cup, however they manufactured that to be, that's what I use. Now I've needed. I've kneaded hamburger by hand, and it mixes it just fine, and all that stuff, but my hands hurt, so I don't use that anymore. I tried this the other day, and it works for works for me. may not work for you, but it works for me. I take a hand mixer, and I just put it on, I put it on low, and kind of, you want to kind of push the iron to it. Not fast, you don't want to push into a fast, you're going to put hamburger all over your kitchen. And that would not be a good time for anybody. Not for anybody at all. Now what you're doing, when you're doing this, it's going to mix in with the hamburger. 
But it's actually, and I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. It's actually doing two things. Besides mixing in the hamburger, this is helping to break the fat and proteins up that are in the, in the ground beef so that when you put your hamburger together, I don't know if you've ever made hamburgers at home before, but whenever you put the hamburger together before, right, it just comes apart. Well, between the, the herbs and, especially if they're fresh, get a little more power here, especially if they're fresh, um, especially if they're fresh, they help keep, they help uh, hold the moisture inside the hamburger. So as the hamburger cooks, it doesn't, it, um, it doesn't lose all the moisture inside. So when you go to, um, we can go to um, make it or cook it, it doesn't fall apart on you. You say it's together really well. And um, what you're going to look for is a consistency. You want to start kind of, you know, kind of back up on it, get a little more speed here. So you want to kind of start looking at it so it has a consistent, um, consistent, uh, uh, consistency. So instead of like when I first put it in here, it was all broken up. You want to start having like a, almost like a batter. Like almost like a, like a, like a really thick cake batter. Put it that way, I'll tell you this way, but. You want to keep going around. Um, based on your ingredients, based on your ground beef, based on a lot of stuff. It's going to be how long you have to mix it. You may have a better mixture. You may have a faster mixture. You may do, you just have to do it with your hands. That's okay to you. All right. So that's about what we're looking for right there. And now, this is the best part. Especially if you have fur babies. I'm going to wash my hands right off this. Boo-boo, come here. Now, you know when you're a kid and you like to uh, lick the, the beaters? Well, here you go, boo-boo. These little boys, here, like will take the, uh, they'll take the, uh, the, uh, um, the beaters and they'll lick them clean. Come here, boo-boo, this one for you. Come here. Here you go, buddy. So they'll lick those clean, and so that saves me on that. And if you're going, if you fed them raw meat, they're going to get E. coli. Um, they're the same family as wolves, and I don't remember wolves running around campfires cooking their meat. All right, so back from washing my hands. Put it on your goes again, because we're going to be touching the meat again. So. You don't have to use gloves, you can wash your hands, like I said. This, for me, it works better just because I don't want to get all the fat off of my hands. So, what we do is, um, it's kind of like making a meatball. And, uh, you can make them however big you want, but the main key is you almost want, I take, like to say mine, I like to uh, roll it to a ball about that size, about baseball size. And I toss it back and forth between my hands. And it may seem silly, may seem nuts, but by doing this, it helps congeal that fat on the outside and it'll help hold the patty together. Now, I want you to take a look at that patty. Okay? So if that's how that's how you get your patties to look like that. That's how I do it anyway. And so I take them and I put them around a plate. Now you can make if you use if you use less a smaller size meatball type thing, and you can use these meatballs too, by the way. If you want to make them a different way with different ingredients, but um, you can um, use these.
use this method for a lot of different things, I'm guessing. It's just, and I'm, I'm not saying I invented this, I'm saying that I'm the first person to do this, but this is just how I make them, and they, are, they, held, they hold together pretty well. Um, I'm guessing it's, it mimics those fast food chains, uh, machines they use to uh, make, the, make the hamburger. They probably exude it under pressure, um, and that's what helps the patty stay together. But it's also what helps the patty come apart in your mouth. And that's what these are. These will come apart in your mouth, not in your hand. And as you can see, I can just set them down there. I don't have to worry about them breaking. I can pick this back up. You know, have you ever made patties where you can just pick it back up, put it back down, no problem. I'm just helping everybody out there. I want everybody to have better burgers. Right? Everybody, everybody should have better burgers, especially in the summertime. Going into August and September. Might as well enjoy some of the outdoor time with a barbecue and with um, with some hamburgers, whoever you want to invite to over, you can do that as well. But if you make these burgers, next time you have burgers, make them yourself, that's fine. If you just give it a chance, because I'll tell you that these will be one of the best burgers you've had if you use the method to make them. Like I said, use whatever herbs you want um, and whatever green you want, whether it's lettuce or spinach or whatever, a cow. You just need something that can take a little bit of heat for a little bit and not really lose its um, lose its uh, body, it, you know, just fall apart. Because we want that to be a little bit stronger in there and that's what's going to keep the moisture coming into the inside of the burger. As that because that lettuce and or, or whatever other green cooks slower than everything else. Hold on, I guess I know you got done licking the beater and now you want to lick the ball. So just I got one more patty to make and you can lick the ball. Like he's over here waiting and waiting and waiting to get this ball. So that's the, that's the other good thing is if you have dogs, um, washing the stuff up after they get done cleaning it. It's a lot easier than letting it soak in anything. I'll tell you that right now. And if you're going to use herbs, make sure, um, like garlic, dogs can have garlic. So just make sure you use ones that are okay for dogs to eat if you're going to let your dogs do the beaters and the, and the things. So I'm going to set this down on the floor for them. And they're going to enjoy this. Here you go, guys. That's slippery there. But anyway, that's how you make them. And um, what I like to do is I put them in the fridge for a few minutes. I just let them just kind of set up. And then I go take them on the grill. My grill advice that I learned on hamburgers is you basically don't want to turn them very often. You want to set it on there, let it cook for a while on the bottom. And then when you see the juices start coming out the top, especially if they're a clear juice, you know, they're not the orange color, blood color, then you can go ahead and turn it over and it'll go ahead and it'll go ahead and sear that bottom part as well and that also helps keep it. So give it a try. Let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.